So I think one of the main reasons I came here was the dynamics of the faculty environment. The faculty here, Dr. Ellis has done a tremendous job building uh, what, what he considers to be an expanded scope practice. They truly mean it when they say this is a broad spectrum program. We do everything from denoalveolar to craniofacial, TMJ, orthognathic, trauma. If you can think of it in oral surgery, we do it. We actually have two days a week of dedicated time where we go through denofacial deformity conference, we do journal club, we have special meetings that are done by our faculty or special guests, and we also have our residents prepared lectures. We have a specific seminar with the orthodontics uh, departments twice a month, and we also have another seminar with the pros department once a month. Our program is unique in that the medical school occurs first. Uh, when you apply to this program, you don't have to interview separately with the medical school or complete the MCAT. There's no additional requirements. You're just automatically admitted by matching to this program. In our first year, we spend time in the classroom with second and first year medical students going through the body systems, um, as well as doing clinical skills rotations uh, with standardized patients. All these courses in the standardized patients are there to help you prepare for the step exams. So we take step one at the conclusion of that first year. We have a month of dedicated time to study for it, and our entire first year is solely dedicated to becoming um, good MD students. We don't have any oral surgery requirements. In our second year, we do clerkship rotations with the third year medical students. And what that means is that we spend time in the hospital on a wide variety of rotations from psychiatry to ob -GYN, surgery as well, internal medicine, and all of that is in preparation to take the step two CK exam at the end of that year. Our third year is our true intern year. So during that year, we spend 10 months on oral surgery and two months that are used to finish the medical school curriculum. You do get your MD at the end of that third year. During our intern year, we're responsible for taking primary call at the hospital, both trauma and tooth or dentoalveolar. We also are supported in that call by our fifth years, our sixth years, and our non-categorical interns, so you never feel like you're alone in the hospital. At the VA, as a PGY3, you're the only resident there for most of the time, except for when you're taking call. It's a pretty great mix of uh, dental alveolar as well as some surgical experience that you get to do. Um, so you spend one day in the OR there. You also spend the rest of the four days of the week uh, spending time seeing patients that are referred to you from the VA dental clinics and patients that are referred to you from either the emergency room there or from other uh, clinics. During their fourth year of their training, the residents spend six months in general surgery and six months in anesthesia. The six months of general surgery are spent in the ICU, trauma, ER, and the neurosurgery department. The six months of anesthesia are spent at University Hospital, except for one month where it's dedicated exclusively to pediatric care. This is done downtown at Santa Rosa Children's Hospital. Our teams are composed of PGY6s, PGY5s, PGY3s, and non-categorical interns, both PGY3s and non-categorical interns being equal interns on our services. The PGY6s and PGY5s form one team in the hospital, we form one team in the clinic, we have one PGY6 in El Paso, and then the other PGY5 is an additional person in our clinic here at the dental school. The trauma call schedule here at UT Health San Antonio is split amongst oral and maxillofacial surgery, plastic and reconstructive surgery, as well as ENT and otolaryngology. The call schedule tends to be displaced onto the PGY3s and non-categorical interns uh, heavily, so PGY3s are taking the trauma call, non-categorical interns are taking both tooth, dental infection call, um, and are backups to the trauma call. One of the things our residents really enjoyed is the possibility of doing outreach and mission trips. Both Dr. Miller and myself go to South America to provide cleft lip and palate care to patients that really need it but have no means of getting that procedure done. It is not uncommon that many of our residents say that that mission trip is one of the highlights of their training program. 